All right, so in this problem, they tell us that if y minus b, so it's y minus b, over x minus a, right, let's fix that, x minus a, equals m, then x is equal to what? Well, essentially what they're telling us to do is to solve this question, right? So we have x minus, a y minus b over x minus a, and we want to solve for x. So let's walk through how we might do that y minus b, I'll be right down here, over x minus a equals m. All right, so the first thing I would do if I was solving for x is get it out of the denominator. So I'd multiply x minus a on both sides, and if you're wondering why, I think you'll see why this is a great thing in a moment. Well, because whatever x minus a is, when I multiply this fraction by x minus a, Right, I'm taking y minus b times x minus a, but then I'm also dividing by x minus a. So x minus a divided by x minus a is just 1. So that's a nice move in this equation because it reduces right, one of the terms. And now what we get, I'll rewrite the whole thing, y minus b right, equals, well, let's distribute right, the m here because we want to eventually solve for x, and right now it's trapped in these parentheses. So I want to take m times x and m times a. So that's mx minus ma, right? I distributed the m by multiplying it by x and by a, and it's a negative here because we're subtracting. So now we want to solve for x. So what do we do? Well, generally when solving for a variable, we want to kind of move all the terms away from that variable. So eventually it says something like x equals and then a bunch of terms. So it tells us what x equals. In this case, x won't equal a number, but it will equal a term that's defined by the variables y, b, a, and m. So we add m, a to both sides. And that's going to be helpful because, right, that gives us one less term to deal with on the right side because subtracting m, a and then adding m, a that's a zero combination. And now we have y minus b plus ma, we can't reduce that, equals right m times x. So m times x, or x times something, equals this over here. So then using the inverse operations, right, dividing both sides by m, right, we're undoing that multiplication. So we can find out what x equals. So now we're basically there, right? m divided by m is 1. And over here we have y minus b plus ma, right, over, over m equals x. But we can simplify this a little bit further if we want to, right? Because y divided by m, that's just ym. We don't know what that is, right? Minus b over m, okay, plus m a over m, and I'm just pulling this fraction apart. If you think about how we add fractions, for example, if I had two-fifths plus one-fifth plus one-fifth, that would equal, well, it would equal two plus one plus one, two plus one plus one, or four-fifths. So we're kind of starting right here, and then I'm pulling the fraction apart, so it becomes, instead of two plus one plus one, it's two over five, plus 1 over 5, plus 1 over 5. That's the connection I'm using right here, the way we can pull apart these fractions. So instead of y minus b plus ma, it's y over m minus b over m plus ma over m, right? Just as it was for 2 fifths over 1 fifth over 1 fifth. And here, why this is helpful is because it allows us to divide or simplify this one term. Right? m divided by m is 1. So you could rewrite this as y minus b over m plus a, and that equals x. Now it's interesting to me, I'm noticing I don't really see that in our choices here, right? And in fact, it looks like to me they stopped right here, choice a, y minus b plus a m over m, and that's true that equals x. But I guess you can go even a little bit further and simplify it to this point right here. It's a little bit easier, I think, to work with, although I guess you could argue that this is a good stopping point because it has all the terms in one fraction. Anyway, uh, here the choice is A, but also you, know, you could simplify further. And that might also be something you encounter in other algebra problems. All right, thanks a lot.